And hello again, this is a continuation of the discussion on how to work with uh, Photoshop uh, image uh, or brushes, rather, uh, ABR brushes, brush sets. Uh, this one by the example of uh, Ron the Birds, Ron Deviney, who has uh, great collections of uh, trees and birds and many other types of brushes. Um, one thing that uh, we want to cover is an, a tool from another developer and artist, and that is the tool that we'll use to actually work with these brushes. So the tool is called ABR Mate. You can find it at uh, texturemate.com. It's a free tool. Um, there are some free textures and brushes, patterns, design articles, great stuff here, really uh, fabulous material to explore. And it's free. Um, always encourage a little donation as well. Um, but one thing in particular that I like is this tool here, the ABR Mate. When you go there, you can download this free uh, tool to preview your brushes um, and, and it's, it's freeware, it's a Windows application that allows you to see what's in your ABR brush collection and actually then export them to PNG file format so that you can use them in dog waffle so and of course other uh, programs as well so this is what I did with ABR mate I loaded the uh, bird here, the Ron's Birds ABR file, and it shows me all of the brush images that are contained in that brush set. And so from that you can say, well, maybe I need something like this uh, Heron or Egret, if I'm using version 7, uh, or was it version 8 of Howler that had the, the Egret uh, name. Uh, there's also these birds sitting, and one thing that you can do is actually select them all or export them one by one or export the entire collection and uh, and then load them as a uh, uh, animated brush into dog waffle so lots of different ways to work with that let me show you just two different ways to export those uh, into PNG so one of them would be a single image let's say this tree here or this one with a bird on it or this one let's say we want one of those like this one here has a whole flock there I like this one here that one is number 86 and it has one single bird in it I'm simply right clicking on that and export it to PNG right or uh, you can uh, find similar options here export selected brush to PNG and when you do that it exports it as you see on the progress bar down here and once the export is done uh, it's actually still saving or asking you to say where you want to save it and obviously I've done this just a few minutes ago and uh, that file already exists so in this case it's going to ask me do do i really want to override it uh it saves it in just one format png that's all we need it's perfect and so what i'll do is save it it says yes it's okay to override it and now that i have that file it shows it in a preview here in in a windows explorer and I can go and locate it and and then work with it in uh, Howler. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, certainly if I want to work with it uh, with the transparent uh, white background or, or whatever the color is, it's transparent. And uh, in Windows Explorer here doesn't actually tell us what color it is. It just shows that it is transparent. Uh, and it does that by uh, flagging it, showing it as white. It's quite possible that it's actually a different color. And in fact, if you double click it to open it in infant view, in my case here, um, it's actually showing all black. Uh, but that's okay. The selection mask in the alpha channel is what really holds the, uh, the image and anything else outside of it. We don't care what color it is. You can check under image information that it is indeed a 32-bit uh, per pixel image on the original colors and that means that it does have uh, not just 24-bit uh, for red, green and blue containing the black and white or grayscale image but it does also have, and in fact could be a colored image at that but it does have the alpha channel on top. So what we'll do is we'll load that into Howler and we'll start uh, working with that directly <laughs> from that PNG file. There's a couple of different ways to do that. You can simply import it right here uh, you could import it or you could uh, open it rather and uh, find that image that you want to work with uh, that's not it there's a few others there that's the one I wanted 
And so here's the image. It's a fairly high resolution image. It's all black, but that's okay because it also has the image uh, of the, the selection mask. We can store that <clears throat> and then we can reveal it actually independently of that. We can say, show me alpha, right? Alpha on off. Or you can store the alpha, just the alpha channel alone. If there is one, we'll be able to see it. <clears throat> and sure enough, there it is. The selected part, the white parts are the ones that are selected. <clears throat> are okay. So that means if we enable the alpha channel, show marching ants, uh, alpha on off, there you go, uh, we do see that. Now that may take a little toll on the performance of your system as it needs to keep animating those marching ants. <coughs> so you might want to disable that um, knowing it's still there. Um, so now how do we actually turn it white outside if we want to see it as such, right? I mean, again, it's, it's not so much what color it is, it's whether it's selected or not. And um, what one thing you can do if you see it like that, you could say, well, let's, let's invert the selection. We can do that from the stored copy of the alpha here. Invert it and replace it. So now we have the outer part selected and we can erase that to white. Right click here on the erase tool and erase that to white. Now we get to see this. And in a way, we don't need to show the alpha anymore. It's still there. The selection mask is still there, but we don't need to see it. Uh, if we store this one, store image copy, now we have a version of the stored image with also the alpha channel in it uh, that we can more easily recognize what's in it, right? Uh, so maybe this one we can toss at this time. Uh, another way to work with this is if you want to work directly into the brush, load that image directly into the brush, you can go from the brush menu and open it from there, right? So when you go with that, let's say I'm going to use this one here. That's a different image with the power or phone lines, power lines, and a couple of trees on, a couple of birds on it. It's now loaded into my brush. And so I could, uh, I could go and uh, paint that anywhere I want in the background there. Right, so that's the thing is that it's in the brush. You can paint with that whichever way you want. Um, so in that, that brush image you can store. And then once you have a stored copy of it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can resample it. So all sorts of different ways to actually use that. Uh, once you, uh, you're you satisfied that you have the size you want. And then one thing you could do is also uh, build up your own collection. Uh, you could say, for instance, here in the browse media, you want to store any of these images or brushes that you're putting together. All right, way back. <laughs> A phone call, those headhunters. Uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, so one thing I want to do is um, uh, store this image and then perhaps other ones that I'm gradually converting or importing and using in Dog Waffle. So I'm going to use this tool here. First of all, the browse media allows you to see a visual of the different media, different brushes that you also, for the most part, have access to right here. Or if you right click on the brush tool, Right. Well, the browse, browse media is where you want to store it because not only will it store the image of that brush uh, in a ready to use format, but it will also uh, store other parameters that you have with it, like random position. If you look at the settings here, you have all sorts of uh, options, uh, including some special effects with gouache, watercolor effects, translucent watercolor and pigment lifting and that sort of things. That's when you do uh, smear brushes and brushes that look like oil and watercolor or really like the real natural media, uh, shadow cast and other stuff. Um, but even just the random, uh, like if you're using those uh, pictures of the uh, soul birds, uh, the single birds by themselves, uh, like this one here, and you want the whole flock of them, um, you, you might want to simply, there these guys, you might want to have a bunch of these in your animator brush and then store them in the media browser. So this is what you can do to store it. You cre create a new category if that's the first time. And uh, I'm going to say that's going to be Ron Deviney <laughs> ABR brushes, right? So I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to create a category here to store uh, the brushes that I bought at Daz uh, 3D and that I'm going to use inside of uh, Howler. Uh, so I need to simply find uh, my category here somewhere. And I don't know if I properly named it. I probably did not. Why can I never find it? All right, let's do that again. 
name for the media. Oh, that's the name of the brush, silly me. No, here's the name of the folder, create folder first, right? Some other options here, browsing the folder. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought this one is the one to save the, the brush. No, this is where you save the brush. Okay, so here's where you go create a folder. Duh. <laughs> See, that phone call really threw me off. So here is, yeah, the brush image. I mean, here's the here's a pencil or a brush, right? And then here is the, the, the folder icon. So let's create a, add a new folder. And I'm going to call that run the viney brushes right <clears throat> and um, then at that point I should be able to find it there it is in an alphabetic order now I can say okay which one do I have here that's the power pole with uh, with lots of birds so I'm gonna call this one save this here power pole with many birds you know one thing you could do also is just give it the number that it had I don't suppose we could find it here uh, whatever that number is, you see number 18, 19, 24, and so on. So when you see what, there it is, that's the one here, number 9, okay? So the smart thing would be to actually put that in there, number 9, something like this. Put that at the beginning, so you will gradually see them as you convert them and import them and save them in your media browser. You'll see them in the same order, uh, ordered by an alphabetic, maybe put a zero in front of it so it will all play really nicely in alphabetic order. So save that. Now you have a brush. Now here is what it looks like uh, as a brush. It's not the single static image. It's when you paint with it. That's uh, how it appears there. But uh, you can you can always click back on that and boom, you've, you've got it available again. So we'll do that also with this one here or if that's the same, right? So, um, oh, that's the alpha. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, the alpha and the brush here together use as brush and alpha and uh, store this brush there it is and uh, ah, it's not transparent so I need to restore the alpha here as well so I'm gonna go with uh, use image uh, where's the alpha replace alpha uh, let's make sure we have the alpha enabled it does not look like we have oh, yeah we do have it here so we can overlay alpha um, it probably needs to be inverted. So invert, replace, there you go. So now we can pick this up as a brush. And um, so now we have a non-opaque uh, background and we do have the brush itself here. We can store this brush and there it is. This one we can toss, this we don't need. Okay, so now we have two brushes, uh, this one here and that's the pole here. And then this one here, that's the tree with the bird. Okay, and of course we may want to set the opacity to full. There you go. And then store that one as well. So I'll go back to the media browser, browse media. And we're still in the same category here. Um, in the category called Ron Divine, Ron Divine Brushes. And if not, we'll select it. And then we'll give uh, this brush a new name. <coughs> this one is Lone Bird. <coughs> and again, it helps if we remember what number that was. Um, I think if I remember it's down here, yep, uh, number 86. So let's go and put that one in as 86 dash lone bird on tree with no leaves. With no leaves. There you go. Lone bird on tree, oh, oh tree. On tree with no leaves. There. So we have another one here, right? And so that way we can build up our collection of brushes <coughs> that we can use inside of Dog Waffle. And so at this point, if you uh, create something new and that something new is perhaps a image of this sort, this size, and um, let's go just very quickly create um, something like um, a rendering a sky. This is a cheap sky, but it will do for the quick purpose we need here. Uh, let's go our particle brushes and populate this with a little bit of grass, some baddy grass. Where's my baddy grass? There's baddy grass. And pin it down here and then simply put this grass right all over here. Okay. And now we want that brush, this one here. Enable that. Uh, actually, no, we collect it directly from here. And here it is, 86, Lone Bird on Tree. Now, again, maybe we need it smaller or brighter. So if we already have a stored copy, we can work with that. 
but even if you don't have a stored copy, the moment you pick it from here, 86, um, what you can do is um, store it again. Or before you do that, remember we need to also, once at least before we store it, perhaps preferably pre-multiply correction, set it to white so that we get rid of the whitish uh, uh, halo around that selection. That's much better looking now. And so now we can store that, uh, store and manage a copy of that. There it is. And we can make it smaller and perhaps even smaller. There you go. And uh, put our tree right there. There you go. Disable the preview of the brush and now go back to painting more on that uh, particle brush setting and there you go. Here we have now a beautiful image composition with Ron Devine's uh, birds. Right, thanks for watching.